political disagreement in our country is unavoidable. We're, we're split just about 50-50. And thanks to social media and T-shirts and bumper stickers and country music, everybody pretty much knows where everybody else stands. So on any given day, in any given context, you are likely to encounter someone who does not think the way you think or vote the way you vote, especially if you're on X or Twitter or whatever we're calling it these days. And I think that's actually a good thing. I mean, there are some places in the world where there is no political disagreement, at least none that's tolerated. Disagree with the party line and you disappear. So we should be thankful we live in a country where you can not only have a differing opinion, you can express it. Freedom of speech. Awesome. Of course, if you have the right to say what you think, so does everybody else. Hence the disagreement. But we don't have to be disagreeable. In fact, if you're serious about following Jesus, you are called to love your neighbor, even if your neighbor is politically challenged. So how do you love someone whose politics are just nuts? Over the next few episodes, I'm going to pass on some suggestions that might help. Here's one to get us started. Find common ground with your neighbor by first focusing on the ends, not the means. I mean, there are lots of issues for which we want the same outcome regardless of party affiliation. I mean, everybody wants safe schools, low crime. Nobody wants people to be homeless or trapped in addiction. We all want a strong, a strong economy, and who doesn't want world peace? We could probably list 30 issues where we agree on the end we hope to achieve. So let's start there with that agreement. That's where we find common ground. Then we can begin to talk about the means. That's where our disagreement lies. And that's where it gets frustrating if you're a Christian. Because the Bible has a lot to say about what God wants, the ends, but not as much to say about how we get there, the means. For example, in Jeremiah 29, verse 7, God told his exiled people, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. The end God wanted for Babylon was peace and prosperity. But other than praying for it, God didn't tell them how to achieve that end. That was something they were going to have to figure out together with prayer. The next time you find yourself disagreeing with someone over politics, maybe instead of arguing for your side or, or bashing theirs, just ask them, what's the outcome you're hoping for? Chances are the end they seek is not all that different than yours. And if it is, well, we'll talk about that in the next episode. Not a sermon, just a thought.